There are a few ways to hook up a powered subwoofer to a small desktop style uh, 2.0 setup. I'm going to go over a few of them. Usually a subwoofer will have a at least one RCA port or two and at least one uh, speaker level input or two. Now if you have two speaker level inputs the way I recommend is going from the amplifier speaker wire down to the input and then speaker wire out of the output to the speakers. And what that does is allows the volume knob on your amp to control the volume of the sub and the volume of the speakers. On this Martin Logan 300, it only has level ins, which means you either have to run the speaker wire down and then put another set of speaker wires in the exact same holes and run those to the speakers, uh, giving full range to the speakers and you adjust for the crossover what that naturally occurs. Or you can uh, split and, uh, for example, here is the banana plugs in the back of this amp and I could plug in a set of speakers which these are the Dayton B652's up top and they are very inefficient speakers which means they require more power to drive them these emotivas are efficient which means I put a little bit of power on and they play loudly you put the Dayton's on and you've got to push it 20 percent more there are calculations you can go through to actually get that now if I turn this on Right. Speakers are playing fine. I want to make this sub work with it. Uh, this is the line from the subwoofer. And if you don't have banana plugs, you can just screw everything into the terminals here. Uh, you'll probably get banana plugs because it's very, very annoying to do that. And I'm just piggybacking off one set of banana plugs to the other. So grounds, 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 hots. And actually the left and right of the hot now doesn't matter because the subwoofer is mono. But you're going to follow the uh, left and right color scheme at least. You have to make sure you get the hots and grounds correct or this won't work. But the left and right are nearly irrelevant. So let's uh, put this back up. I'll put that up so you can hear it. Alright, that's very, very loud and the GoPro squelches so you can't tell. But yes. Things are playing, subwoofers playing at a relatively good volume. Yeah. All right. I do have the level, however, to maximum to so you could hear it. So, because these are inefficient and require more power, that means that the power that's coming down to the subwoofer to tell it to work is enough to make it blend correctly. You have a, an adjustment level here that you can tune, and it's fine. The problem comes when you are using very efficient speakers like the Emotivas or the Fluence SX6s or I'm trying to think of other really efficient speakers those giant pioneers if you have those set up on a small amp like this that doesn't have a dedicated sub out using these inputs at least on this particular subwoofer doesn't work it works but even cranked to maximum because the amplifier is only up 20 percent producing good volume that's not enough power to make the speaker level inputs do their thing and make this subwoofer blend. So, to get around that failing, you have to use the line level inputs. Now, there's two, way to do, two ways to do that. Uh, these are the computer ends are coming off the uh, mode of a DAC over there. And I'm going to piggyback using these little adapters. So now I have the computers coming in, hitting this amplifier, which will power, we'll put the emotivas on, these are the emotiva speakers, aren't banana plugs easy, and here is a wire that we are going to connect to the RCA line inputs on the sub, make sure my levels are good, and now we're going to jump out like that. So now what's happening is signals coming from the computer into these uh, splitters. It's going here, it's coming back out, it's going there. So now, I paused it. I have the volume all the way down, I'm gonna unpause. Now the subwoofer is playing all on its own. And then I can turn on the amplifier. Now that's the problem with this system, is now that you have, now you have two independent volume controls. So you got that to go up. And no subwoofer, or the subwoofer go up, 
Jesus God, and no speakers. So that's why I don't like doing it this way. If you have a set of powered monitors that the amplifier is built into the unit, this is your only option. You do this to the back of the amp on the speaker because there's absolutely no speaker connections to be had. So powered monitors get hooked up in this in this jumping fashion, which this is still actually, yeah, it's just passing the signal down. And we're just stealing the signal to put into the amplifier. So now, if we're not doing it this way, and we're not doing it using the speaker inputs, what are we doing? Well, what we're doing is, let me undo this mess of crap. This is a line level converter, which is mostly used in automotive uh, setups. And what this does in an automotive setup is you go into your trunk, you have the two rear speakers in the back of your car, and you wire these speaker wires in, the little, little, little wires that come off. They don't come with these banana plugs. And you wire in your speaker wires left and right, and it gives you RCA output. And you can plug this into an amplifier or into a powered sub in your trunk. So in this situation, the exact same thing is happening. We are going to intercept the amplifier. I'm doing it before. You could do it before or after. It doesn't make a difference. Plug our speakers back in to the back. So now this amplifier is powering the speakers, these big speakers, and the power is passing through this device. And there's gain adjustments, just turn them all the way up. There's little gain knobs you adjust with a screwdriver. Turn them up, turn them up. And now what we have is we have straight runs from our computer to the amp. And using this set of wires, we have a secondary RCA right there. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to unmute this. I'm going to put it up. And everything's playing in sync, just like it was when we had it hooked up to this. Straight to the back. But because of these speakers being efficient, that isn't good enough. And this, this box, will give a higher signal to the RCAs than you can from... In other words, this box is built into a subwoofer. That's what these connections are. One of these lives in here. But for some reason, and I don't know the reason, the gain controls that are built in are not set high enough. So when you have really efficient speakers and using a low power amp, it just doesn't make the sub go. So now that you have this, now that you're using line-ins, you can, just like you were before, adjust this. And that is doing its thing. And it's, at, it's doing it at Half, half game. The only other thing I would add is if you have a sub, and some subs only have a single RCA input for LFE for uh, home theater use, you just have to buy one of these adapters, the same adapter, and then plug it into one side. And this will actually still work. The reason you have to do that is because this is outputting left and right left and right base information is coming out of here, going into here, and at some point, if your sub can't take left and right, it's only going to amplify a left or right channel, and that might get a little weird. So combining them and putting them into an LFE input will allow the sub to still work. When the sub does have two, two inputs, I recommend leaving them both plugged in, because that can add a decibel or two, depending on how the circuitry is designed. And then of course you play with your phase. Phase just means when the speaker when you hear a boom note, phase zero means the speaker's going out and then when you have it on 180 it goes in and out. And that's a that's a timing thing. If your sub isn't here, if your sub is two feet further away, how the room reflects, you may have to switch that switch or if it's a knob adjust it. But uh those are the three ways? Two ways? I don't remember how many ways I just taught you how to do that. But uh yeah. This is how I recommend it if you have a small T amp. Efficient speakers like the Fluence or anything that you don't have to use the volume greatly. If you're having lackluster performance out of a powered sub, any powered sub, I only have this one here to test and the one that's buried down there. So it does help. It does help a great deal. You could, you could also, and here's the thing, you could use really short RCA cables and just run long wire lengths to this box. This box doesn't have to live in your desk. This box could get Velcroed to the subwoofer. You could use little 
one foot lengths and then just run speaker wire because speaker wire is not going to take any interference well it can you pretty much just run it through a microwave but uh line levels like this if you have your sub far far away more than 15 feet you may be better off just running speaker lines to it uh, and don't try to use this box to pass through to another amplifier because this system doesn't really do well in any frequencies above like 350 400 i've hooked it up like this i've piggybacked to another amp and it just sounded like garbage but low end bass stuff is very low frequency it does not have to have a lot of brains to handle bass so this works just fine can i get some dead mouse up in yeah oh you how to destroy angels even better yeah the idea is to have your gain knob on your subwoofer never at full this will allow you to lower that down and then properly adjust. And it works with the volume control. If you skip like that, it doesn't. And if you're willing to do that, by all means, just buy the little, little RCA male to two female, have it bounce sources in and out, and then just set this amp and then control with your keyboard volume or whatever. And that'll work fine. But this is how I'm currently gonna recommend doing it. There will be a diagram in the description and 